Hop water is a thing right now, and that's a good thing. Hop water is quite delicious, especially if you like beer. But if you don't like beer, that's okay, because hops have their own distinct flavor. It's more of a piney citrus, sometimes grapefruit, and additional other flavors uh, in the fruity range that makes for a delicious beverage that tends to have a little more bite than most non-alcoholic drinks. Now, typically to make hop water, you need brewing equipment and most recipes require, you know, five gallon corny keg worth. I'm gonna show you how to make 200 to 800 glasses in a 120 mil, 200 mil bottle size that you can make anytime with soda water and just a dropper bottle. Uh, it's much easier. It preserves the quality of the hops because once you boil hops, as in the hop water method, it kind of dries off a lot of the flavor compounds and does oxidize the oils. And with this method, we don't do that. And you can use it in a lot of different things. You don't have to just use it in hop water. You can use it in non-alcoholic beers. If you find them not flavorful enough, you can put it in cocktails. And there's a lot more you can do with it. So if you're looking for a good non-alcoholic beverage that has a little bit of bite that reminds you of alcohol, this is a good starting point. So let me show you how to do it because it's really easy and cheap. You only need about $5 worth of hops, a little bit of alcohol, and that's it. I'm Dirt O'Neill. This is Art of Drink. And today we're obviously talking about hops. And if you don't know what this is because you just found this video, these are percolators. I have a whole video on how to make an extract. They're just a simple way of doing kind of a maceration, but making it easier to filter. Now, the one issue with hops that I discovered when doing this the prep work for this video is that hops often come in a dried pellet form. You can get, you know, leaf hops, but this is the, the, the standard type hop you're going to find. And when you grind them up with a mortar and a pestle, so it turns into a very fine powder. Now the problem with this powder, uh, it's kind of a leafy floral material, is that it tends to absorb an equal amount of its weight in your solvent. So if you weight out 100 grams of hops, it's going to absorb 100 grams or 100 mils of your solvent, in this case, alcohol. Now this is a non-alcoholic drink, and I'll explain that in a minute, but you do need some alcohol to extract the hop oils because hop oils are not soluble in water. And if they are, they're sparingly soluble. And so, there's a way to get it in using an extract method, which is this. But anyway, the point I wanna make is that in a typical extract, if you watch the extract video, I say that you know 100 grams of material, whether that's cinnamon or hops, will, you, you can get it fully extracted with 100 mils of solvent, not in this case. Uh, typically it's 120 mils. I always find the material absorbs a certain amount of your solvent and won't let it go. With hops, it seems to absorb an equal amount of the solvent. So in this case, if I put 60 grams of hops in here, uh, it's gonna hold on to 60 mils of alcohol. So in this case, we have to go, I didn't wanna go to a tincture level, which is 10 parts solvent to one part hops, uh, because that's too much alcohol. So what I've done is four to one. So 240 mils of alcohol, and 60 grams of hops. And that's going to get you roughly 180 to 200 mils of hop extract. Now this is quite concentrated, uh, but it works brilliantly in hop sodas and hop uh, water, hop tea, whatever, wherever you wanna use your hops. You can use it in cocktails uh, as like a bittering agent. The one thing with this is that it's not boiled. So the isomerization of the hop oils does not happen, which creates that bitterness that um, you find in beer. So this is less bitter. It does have a hint of bitterness. It, and that's kind of the appeal is that there is that little bit of bite that non-alcoholic drinks typically don't have. Hop water has that bite and it's enjoyable. And again, the flavor on its own is pine, citrus, grapefruit. You know, in this case, we're using Yule melon, uh, a German hop, and it's got, you know, quote unquote, aromas of melon and strawberry. Eh, I don't find they stand out that much. Usually hops smell like hops, but you may be able to pick them up in the soda or the seltzer or the hop water we're going to make. So for the extraction method, it's just the standard extract method. Go watch the video, but instead of using equal amount of material and solvent, I did four parts solvent to one part hops. 
And uh, a special note, when you put the hops in here, do not pack them tight, keep them as loose as possible so that the alcohol can flow through. Uh, otherwise, if you pack it down a little bit, it just gets so tight because it swells that it doesn't even allow the alcohol to pass through. So even when you're doing this in the extract method, I always tell you to put a little bit of a cotton ball and a little bit of sand down at the bottom to create a filter. Uh, in this case, I even added a little alcohol to the bottom of this and then added my hops loosely with a spoon and then poured in the rest of the alcohol. And pretty much it just floats around in there uh, and does the extract. And then after 48 hours, oh, 24 to 48 hours, you can just start draining it out and add the remaining alcohol and you'll get your 180 to 200 mils of extract. Now this one here, I, the most... Popular question I get is, can you do it without alcohol? Now you can, but it's difficult. I think the next video I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about uh, non-alcoholic extracts and how to do it. But this one was done with propylene glycol. Glycerin is too thick. It's a very viscous liquid. And again, it, it would have a hard time flowing through this. This was actually 60 grams of hops and I added 60 mils of propylene glycol. And so far I've only, you know, there's been 30 mils come out, but I can't get any more out. So even if I add some to this, it doesn't seem to push it down. So your yield with propylene glycol is really low. Now, if you're worried about the alcohol concentration of this, you're gonna be using maximum one mil in a 12 ounce glass or 300 and some odd mils. When you do the calculations, that's 0.1% ethanol because you're using 60 to 70% ethanol in this. That's kind of the appropriate concentration. And if you're using, let's say 65% ethanol, which is what I'm using here, uh, your alcohol concentration is 0.1%. And that means you're going to need to drink 50 12 ounce glasses of this to make one glass of beer, one 12 ounce beer. So that's a little bit extreme. The alcohol level on this is really low. If you're using vodka, it's even lower. And the one tip with vodka, hop oils are not soluble in water. Uh, they are soluble in alcohol, but they do become more soluble if you add a base. So something like sodium bicarbonate, again, the lower the pH, the less soluble hops are. So once you get down to a pH of like four, become practically insoluble. However, if you increase the pH, so if you wanna go up to about nine, you can actually get more hop oils dissolved using vodka. So I would recommend adding a quarter teaspoon of this to 240 mils of vodka, dissolving it, it should dissolve fine. Uh, you can use potassium bicarbonate if you have it, but sodium bicarbonate, it's a pretty common, it'll, Everybody has it, you can get it at the grocery store. But it will increase your extract if you're using vodka. I find with alcohol in the 65% range, you get a, a good extract. But anything with more water than alcohol, add a little sodium bicarbonate and you're gonna get a better extract. Now, obviously when you make your drink, that's going to make it more basic, but that is exactly what seltzers are or you know, uh, carbonated waters, mineral waters. They all tend to be basic anyway. And when you make a hop seltzer or a hop water, uh, that basic flavor may appeal to some people, but you can always add acid. You can add citric acid or acid phosphates, what I'll do here. But it, it does, you, you can adjust these to however you want. Now, in some of the recipes you'll see online that it says you need to adjust the pH to 4.6. That's for storage stability. And that's to get rid of botulism, basically. Botulism and other spoilage, fungus, and bacteria tend to have a harder time growing when the pH is lower. We don't have to worry about this because the alcohol in here is a preservative and this will stay shelf stable probably for years. Again, you may lose some of your flavor, it may oxidize after a year, but it's actually quite stable in this alcohol state. So you don't have to worry about the pH, you can adjust it any way you want. So let me show you how to make it because it's quite simple. But basically, we will take our hop extract. Now I'm going to add half a mil. 
just basically add it to the glass. And then you take your soda water. And that is hop water. It's basically as simple as it gets. And you can put this in a dropper bottle if you want. One of these and then just have it sitting around the bar or your bar or your house. But basically you have hop water and it tastes like hop water. It's uh, slightly reminiscent of beer, but not quite. It's definitely hops are their own flavor. Now, you can add um, malt syrups or even malt powder. Malt powder is a little bit hard to mix in, but you can buy malt syrups for brewing, uh, extract brewing. So this one's rye, or no, that one's uh, golden light, and this one's rye. So you can actually make a syrup, basically make it's equal parts of this and water, so it'll be thin enough to mix. Then you can add that to this. I'll just give it... Again, you're not trying to make a beer, but it's going to, a little bit of sweetness in this really does improve the flavor. I know everybody's into zero alcohol and zero calories, but the reality is even a gram or two of sugar, eh, you know, simple syrup works, but you know, malt syrups work well. Any type of uh, flavoring can be worked into this and it does enhance the flavor. I do find, uh, a little dash of acid phosphate actually makes a pretty decent, the acidity kind of helps. So, uh, gives it a little bit of bite. It's like a flavored seltzer, but with hops. And again, you can add seed lip to it or any of these non-alcoholic um, spirits and they will give additional flavor to this. So there's lots of room to work with this. You can even add this stuff to cocktails. So if you, it, I can see it going really well in a gin cocktail because again, that pine connection, but uh, it tastes like hops. Uh, if you make, if you buy hop water, it's quite expensive. I've seen it for three to $4 a can, you know, even $2 a can because you're literally using, you know, you're literally using, you know, Five dollars worth of hops. So if you bought two ounces of hops, that's what's needed for 60 grams. And you get that for two dollars and fifty cents or three dollars, depending on the type of hop you're getting. And then your alcohol, again, if you're using vodka, you're only gonna need a couple dollars worth of vodka. And once you have this, you're going to be able to make 200 to 800 glasses. If you used a quarter, quarter mil per glass, you can get up to 800. If you use one mil, 200. So, and again, shelf stable. You don't need to actually get a corny keg to make anything. You don't need any brewing equipment. And if you need to know where to buy this stuff, on my Patreon page, I have a list of all the, the equipment you'd need to do this. But these things run about $30. They're quite cheap. Um, you know, you need a lab stand. So maybe $50, $60 investment, and you can make this. Again, you don't need a flask. You can just go directly into the bottle. And what happens is you get this ability to create hop water without actually investing in brewing equipment or buying it in cans. Uh, it's a good non-alcoholic drink. There are health benefits to it, um, depending on where you read, but some of the research is pointing to better health benefits from hops. But one of the things, once you boil your hops, you pretty much oxidized a lot of it and driven off a lot of the aroma compounds. So the health benefits tend to disappear. Making an extract does preserve them longer, not infinitely, but it does preserve them longer. And you can control the dosing. So one of the things is if you have non-alcoholic beer and you find it kind of bland and boring, you know, popping some of this into it, it makes it a much better non-alcoholic beer. So you can do lots of stuff with this. Again, extracting simple. It takes 48 hours and you end up with your own hop water for about you know $10 in ingredients for 200 to 800 glasses. So uh, it's worth the investment if you like hop water and if you wanna play with it for cocktails, you can also do that. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them below and I will talk to you in the next video.